Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be having a look at thermal paste application methods. Now I'm going to be testing many methods, this does include uh, the P, Rice, Line, X and also the Spread method, and just in general I'm going to see which one performs the best. Now I'm going to be testing this with the MX4 thermal paste from Active Cooling, as I do kind of base all my CPU uh, cooler reviews kind of with that thermal paste. Um, yeah, do use that a lot, I've got a big syringe of that. Also, I'm going to be using the same colour, you know, with it being a test, I'm going to keep all, all the other variables the same. You're going to be using the Noctua NHD15, very, very high-end cooler, very, very impressed by the cooler. And if anything, if a thermal paste application method is not very good, you're going to see it with this cooler, with it being pretty damn good. And ooh, also, I do want to mention, I am going to be testing both application methods twice, just for consistency. And I'm also going to test um, applying... A very, very, very small amount, so literally like the tiniest amount of thermal paste possible on the CPU, and then I'm also going to be testing an absolute shit ton of thermal paste. As I mentioned, I am using the Arctic MX4 thermal paste, so it's not conductive, so it spews all over the sides of the CPU socket, don't really matter, um, just be left with a little bit of a mess, but it's not conductive, that's the main thing. Anyhow, um, I'm rambling, let's kind of get on with the video, and yeah, let's see which is the best application method for thermal compound. To get started with the test specific settings used for this experiment, I'll be using the Noctua NHD15 on the Intel Core i7 4790K as mentioned, with a lock frequency of 4.4GHz, with the automatic terror boost disabled. In addition to this, a manual VCore voltage of 1.3V has been set, this is to stop any variance in voltages and also to increase the heat a little. As for the two fans on the heatsink, these are set to a full speed setting in the BIOS to make sure the automatic control doesn't mess up the test. Also, both fans will have the low speed adapters attached that Noctua do provide with them. First up, as for the first installation of thermal paste, I applied a pea-sized amount of thermal paste onto the chip and then fastened the NHD15 cooler on top. Now running the render test that I've mentioned a thousand times to you guys already, this method was able to keep the four cores at 69, 70, 69 and 60 degrees respectively. The hottest core was core 2 at 70 degrees with the average core running at 67 degrees. Removing the cooler we can see the CPU was covered quite well with only the bottom left of the CPU uncovered by a very small amount. Next up we have the rice sized amount of thermal paste applied to the chip. As again, once applying this I did tighten the NHD15 cooler on the top evenly and then running the render benchmark again, this method of thermal paste application was able to keep the cores running at identical temperatures of 69, 70, 69 and 60 degrees respectively. The average and hottest core was the same of course. As of the coverage on the CPU after removing the cooler, this was pretty good as well. Moving swiftly on to the next method, adding a line of good old MX4 to the CPU, plus the NHD15 on top and then benchmarking again. The results was very close, with core 1, 2 and 3 losing a single degree, and core 4 staying the same at a cooler 6 degrees. The results were 68, 69, 68 and 60. As of the coverage, this was pretty good yet again. Next up we have the X method. As this method consists of simply drawing an X on the CPU, this method does include using a tad more thermal compound. Now running the benchmark again, it turned out the results came back nearly the same at 69, 68, 67 and 61. Pretty average. As for the spread on the CPU, it has turned out not to be the best regardless of the amount of thermal compound we did use, with bare areas at the bottom right and a smaller section at the top left. Lastly on the list of sensible application methods we have the spread method. I personally have not used this method as to be honest it does take quite a long time to apply and generally includes getting thermal compound on one of your fingers, which to be honest is not great as removing thermal compound is quite a pain. Now yes, you can of course use a small plastic bag, but you do need to make sure these are clean. Now the results lift method did turn out to be pretty average as well, however surprisingly Core 4 did decide to finally go up by a single degree, with this being chilling at a cool 60 degrees for all the other tests up to now. The temps were, for this test, 69, 68, 68 and 61. Removing the heatsink revealed that the CPU did indeed remain completely covered, which is good to see. Now before I put a big ass graph on the screen, I personally wanted to have a little bit of fun with this thermal compound experiment and I went ahead and applied what I would consider to be far less and also far too much. With too little being about a quarter of what I would normally apply and too much being the opposite at four times as much. From these tests it turned out applying too little is not half bad with results being 69, 70, 69 and 61. And then when it comes to applying too much, this turned out to be better then too little, shockingly, with results of 68, 69, 69 and 61. Coverage with the small amount of thermal compound really does not cover a lot of the CPU. And as for the application with too much thermal compound, to be honest, I don't take the CPU cooler off. If you guys are really interested in seeing what it looks like, do drop me a line in the comments section and I might take the cooler off. 
To wrap up, this chart shows all the methods with their single core temperatures, with the average temperature highlighted in light blue. Overall, it looks like the line method won with 66.25 degrees, with the X and spread method coming in at second place at 66.5 degrees. As for the worst performer, this would be the too little test that was done for fun at 67.25 degrees, with the ever so popular rice and also P methods scoring second worst, averaging 67 degrees. Anyhow, let's sit back on the chair and conclude. So guys, that way am I finding some of this test. Now from this little experiment, we have found the best simul paste application method and also the worst. The, the From all these methods, I, I just want to say, there isn't much variance. There isn't much variance. And if anything, if you guys still want to stick with the application method that you guys feel more comfortable applying, then that is completely fine. As you've seen from the graphs, it's only a few degrees, but if anything, this experiment has been interesting to me to see which application method is kind of the more superior one. Now I want to say, with different coolers and also with the larger um, CPU chips, methods may vary. With the larger chips, for example, a different method might be a little bit better. And with coolers that say have a have a larger or smaller kind of uh, base plate, the results might vary. But I just want to say, this has been with my i7-4790K, with the MX4 compound and with the Noctua NHD15. So results will vary. And if you do find other YouTubers or any other kind of technology sites saying that a different application method is um, kind of the best one versus what I've kind of said, that should be expected. Um, yeah, just wanted, to, just wanted to kind of get that out of the way. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This experiment has been a little bit of fun. I had a little bit different from a standard camera review. And, you know, if you guys have enjoyed it, you know, do feel free to click that good old like button. And if you do have any comments or questions, do feel free to put them in the comments section below. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.